by the grace of our Lord, we will read from the book of Esther, from chapter 1, verse 1. This is what happened during the time of Xerxes. The Xerxes who ruled over 127 provinces stretching from India to Kuz. At that time, King Xerxes reigned from his royal throne in the citadel of Susa, and in the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all his nobles and officials, the military leaders of Persia and Media, the princes and the nobles of the provinces were present. For a full 180 days, he displayed the vast wealth of his kingdom and the splendor and glory of his majesty. When these days were over, the king gave a banquet lasting seven days in the enclosed garden of the king's palace for all the people from the least to the greatest who were in the citadel of Susa. The garden had hangings of white and blue linen fastened with cords of white linen and purple material to silver rings on marble pillars. There were couches of gold and silver on a mosaic pavement of porphyry, marble, mother of pearl, and other costly stones. Wine was served in goblets of gold, each one different from the other, and the royal wine was abundant in keeping with the king's liberality. By the king's command, each guest was allowed to drink in his own way, for the king instructed all the wine stewards to serve each man what he wised. Queen Vasti also gave a banquet for the women in the royal palace of King Xerxes. On the seventh day, when King Xerxes was in high spirits from wine, he commanded he, the seven eunuchs who served him, Meuman, Vista, Harbona, Bigtha, Abatha, Zithar, and Carcass, to bring before him Queen Vasti wearing the royal crown in order to display her beauty to the people and nobles, for she was lovely to look at. But when the attendants delivered the king's command, Queen Vasti refused to come. Then the king became furious and burned with anger. Since it was customary for the king to consult experts in, ma in matters of law and justice, he spoke with the wise men who understood the times and were closest to the king, Karsina, Sithar, Admather, Tarshis, Meres, Marcina, and Memukan, the seven nobles of Persia and Media who had special access to the king and were highest in the kingdom. According to the law, what must be done to Queen Vasti? He asked. She has not obeyed the command of King Xerxes that the Ebnus have taken to her. Then Memukan replied to the presence of the king and the nobles. Queen Vasti has done wrong, not only against the king, but also against all the nobles and the peoples of the provinces of King Xerxes. For the queen's conduct will become known to all the women, and so they will despise their husbands and say, King Xerxes commanded Queen Vasti to be brought before him, but she would not come. This very day, the Persian and Median women of the nobility who have heard about the queen's conduct will respond to all the king's nobles in the same way. There will be no end of disrespect and discord. Therefore, if it pleases the king, let him issue royal decree 
and let it be written in the laws of Persia and Media, which cannot be repealed, that Vasti is never again to enter the presence of King Xerxes. Also, let the king give her royal position to someone else who is better than she. Then, when the king's edict is proclaimed throughout all this vast realm, all the women will respect their husbands from the least to the greatest. The king and his nobles were pleased with his advice, so the king did as Memukan pro proposed. He sent dispatches to all parts of the kingdom, to its providence, and its own script, and to its people in its own language, proclaiming in its people's tongue that every man should be ruler over his own household. Amen. We are on 485 to 465 before Christ. After passing many years from the capture of the people of Israel that were released by Shirus, who was king after Darius for two years. As per Jeremiah prophecy and in continuation, another king came for a few years and then Cambyses, the son of Cyrus, and then Darius the second and latest the Asur Xerxes, who is now the king in Medes and Persians, that his kingdom is luxurious, and he is a king on 27 provinces, and all the wealthy belongs to him. and Xerxes for 180 days he displayed the vast wealth of his kingdom and the splendor and glory of his majesty but our today's message is Vasti the queen who selected by Xerxes from all the women he had that gave to her the king's crown and she became first among the women and she was doing whatever she wanted and as we read she gave also a banquet for the women and she had incredible power but And she had power because of the king Xerxes, because he had selected her. And this is an incredible message. Because the scriptures are written by the Holy Ghost for our training, for our teaching, so the man of God will be teached by the scripture and be perfect and Vasti was unique and she became same like King Xerxes to this unique kingdom because of the king's grace and her characteristic was that she was a very beautiful woman and this is the meaning of her name and she was selected by the king 
Ashwir, and it is very important to respect the king's selection, the king, the god, has selected Sao, David, Christ have selected Judah, Peter, James, John, Christ have selected Paul, a blasphemy man and hunter of the church. But today's message is that Lord Christ have selected you. And he made you son of the living God, inheritor of the living God, Jesus Christ. What a unique selection for you to be a king like him. But the message and question is, what about Queen Basti? Who could remove her from the throne, from a position that was given to her by God because of the king? And in order to understand the message, And we will read from Samuel 15:23. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry, because Saul, you have rejected the word of the Lord, has rejected you, asking. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have seen, I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the people and so I gave in to them. Now I beg you, forgive my sin and now come back with me so that I may worship the Lord. Saul is asking Samuel to forgive him because he's thinking that Samuel made him a king and this is a big mistake. That's why he's asking from the wrong person to forgive him. But Samuel said to him, I will go back. I will not go back with you. You have rejected not my word, but the word of the Lord. And the Lord has rejected you as king over Israel. As Samuel turned to leave, Saul caught hold of the hem of his robe and it tore. Samuel said to him, The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from you today and has given it to one of your neighbors, to one better than you. He who is the glory of Israel does not lie or change. His mind for he is not a man that he should change his mind. And the truth is the, the kingdom of Saul have finished despite being a king for 40 years. But the chosen one who would become a king of Israel is not a better man, humanly speaking, but is a young boy of 17 years old, a shepherd that has one unique characteristic, the same God wants us to have. 
because God says, I find David, the son of Jesse, a man as my heart, that he will make all my wills. And this is the secret. And he was selected to be a king. And as a trainer, he saw who will transform the shepherd to a king soul by persecuting him and fighting to kill him but the Lord was with David and something important Saul was not a sinner ever And David had done serious sins, but had one big difference compared to Saul. He knew who assigned him to be the king and knew to whom he would speak for his sins to be forgiven. And David was a faith servant for God. And Saul forced him through his behavior to pray to the Lord. And David was seeking the Lord and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, doing nothing by his own wisdom, knowledge. But whatever he was doing, it was done after seeking the Lord in his prayer, listening carefully the voice of the God. He was commanded by the Holy Spirit until the end of his life that he decided to build a temple and Nathan told him, the prophet told him, who was his friend, do whatever you want, but the God said that you are a man of blood. And I have predicted this plan by another person by your son, Solomon, who was, not, who, who was not born, and he will receive my wisdom to build a unique temple in the humanity. And there's not such a temple in the humanly history. There were plenty altars, but not such, but this temple was unique. Designed by God. And this is the temple of Solomon in Jerusalem on the specific mount that Abraham went there to sacrifice his son and then he bought the land of Orna and David bought that land and made an altar to sacrifice and set free the Israel from David's mistake and I repeat, the message today is as, is vasty. These beautiful women, but not unique. that she was given 
the king's crown. And same we are through the faith from Lord Christ. And we have also the priest crown that is not visible, but is given to us by our Lord Christ. And I give you the power to step on snakes and scorpions and all the power of darkness and nothing to harm you. And anything you will seek in the name of Christ, I will be giving to you. My Heavenly Father will give you. That's why you should watch out and be careful what you seek for. Don't ask your food, your clothes, because the Gentiles are seeking that. Seek first the kingdom's heaven. And, any, and all your needs will be covered by God. And seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And this is not the luxury of Xerxes, but through many afflictions we will enter the kingdom's heaven. This is what we need to fight the good fight. And what was that good fight? To enter through the gate of God that takes you to the kingdom's heaven. And through the narrow gate, I am proud to my God because he will take me, says Paul, to the kingdom's heaven. And he has completed his mission walking on the way that the Holy Spirit took him and I kept my faith this unique gift from God through the Holy Spirit and this is the love of Father God that is given to us through the Holy Spirit so this unique gift of God love God's love and the humanly love is useless and made create problems to you and make you sinner but only the Father's love can transform our love to love to a powerful love from the Holy Spirit and Jesus said that if you had love if you had faith like a master seed you would command the mountain to fall in the sea and it would be done but you don't have and this kind of faith will complete your faith that is a, a, a faith with assurance of what we don't see and know that it will come true so so the man ha has hope to the Lord Christ and we thank the Lord 
and this man will never fall. Because what God will give him is his spirit of obedience, a spirit to be humble, a spirit of wisdom and love, same as Solomon request. But Solomon did not follow his father's advice. And when his work was completed, building the temple of God, he changed his route. And he was away from God. Same like Astin happened. And so, and Judas, the disciple of Christ, who betrayed his Lord and died. in Akeldama and all the spirit all these people were selected by God in the name of Christ like what you are but watch out be awake and pray not to be tempted because Devil is walking around you. Seeking to find space and harm your soul. For rebellion is like the sin of divination, and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because if you reject the Lord, He will reject you. Amen. <laughs>